First off, uh, everybody hear me okay? I'm hard of hearing, so I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna continue to ask that. Uh, the second thing I'd like to say is I have a, a small military di disability, which is hearing, and so I get my eyeglasses from Iowa, Iowa City. I have to go down. And so when I went down, they asked me if I wanted my COVID shot, and I said, yeah. And then they scheduled me again, so I had my second COVID shot, the second of the mark, uh, second of mark. So I've had my shots, and so you, I hope I can make you feel a little more comfortable if I preach without a mask. Is what I'm <laughs> In other words, God prepared me for this day. <laughs> I was chuckling over what Jesse had to say about you know God moving you around and so on and so forth, and I was reminded of the music today. At this other church we went to, the organist said one time, he says, the congregation doesn't sing the songs like the music is, so I played the music for the congregation so they could sing the song the way they want, they want to. And so, needless to say, I, I, some of this, less of this, I forget which one it was today, but it isn't how I learned it, it's faster, okay? <laughs> and, yeah. And I, and I do love your church. I love small gatherings. So I, I'm beginning to feel quite at home. As a matter of fact, the Lord prepares you for certain things. And believe it or not, he prepared me for this message. He started five years ago, if not a little bit before that. And my wife says, well, you're going to be teaching to a lot of older people. Well, I think I fit right in there. But, uh, <laughs> And don't rock your boat, but this is what God wants me to, wanted me to share with you. So here we go. Uh, I looked on the calendar, and lo and behold, I got to give you some background before we get there. Lo and behold, the Passover is next Sunday. It's the 20th of the month. That's the Passover, okay? And one of the things that I looked on three calendars and three calendars, two calendars says the Passover was on the 20th. And one calendar said the Passover was on the 19th. And you're gonna, when we get into the sermon, you'll, or the message or whatever, you're going to find out why I'm bringing this up before. But the one thing that bothers me is... How do you have the Passover on the 19th and have the Passover on the 20th? Well, there became, when they were in Babylon, there became an argument over the, the full moon. Now, the Jew is on a, a full moon cycle instead of the, a calendar year like we have. So they have, they're on a full moon cycle, but every seventh year, they add another month, which is Nisan or Abib, in there to correct their calendar. So that's their 70th year. But they're on a moon cycle, and you're going to see it as we get into it, because a Passover is on the first full moon after the sun crosses the equator, which is March 20th. So that's the full moon, and that's why, and such, it's not that case this year because Satan gets in there and he messes everything up. But Easter is later than the Passover this year, and it shouldn't be. Actually, Palm Sunday is next Sunday, I think. And, well, so on and so on. But that's why Easter and the Passover float is because they're on the full moon cycle. And every seventh year, they, have, they add an extra month. And every 49th year is the year of Jubilee, and then they have to let their slaves go and, and, and everything else. So with that in mind, I'd like to start by reading Exodus chapter 12 so we can get into the message for today. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Okay? So, and that's after the sun. Now, I find this ironic, but 
somewhere in the 16th century or something like that. Now, the Pope declared that he was going to make the first of the year in January. And they used to keep the first of the year in April. And therefore, and the, Pil the Puritans and some other groups didn't want to go along with the Pope because they didn't really care for Catholicism, and that's why they were here, because the king was going to separate himself and so on and so forth. But anyway, they were known as April Fools. <laughs> because they didn't want to go with that. So that's where April Fools comes from. Okay? Anyway, we're in Egypt. We're 35,000 or 3,500 years ago. We're in the land of Egypt. <clears throat> this month shall be a beginning of months to you. It shall be the first month of the year. Speak unto the congregation of Israel, saying, The tenth day of this month, they shall take unto them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for the house. And if the household be too little for a lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto the house take according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall they make count of the lamb. And the lamb shall be without shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, and he shall take it from the goats, or from the sheep, or from the goats. And he shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two posts, the two posts and upper door post of the house. They shall eat it. Wherein they shall eat it. They shall eat it, the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw or sodden with water, but roast with fire with its head, with its legs, and with the Pertentions, I don't know what that is thereof, but I think it was all the innards and everything else. And let nothing of it remain until morning, that which remaineth until morning, ye shall burn with fire. And thus ye shall lead it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and with a staff in your hand ye shall lead it in haste, for it is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you a token upon the houses where are you in. And when I see the blood, I will pass over, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. And I could keep on reading, but it said, but you're to keep this ordinance forever. Alright? So the 14th day of the first month, which is the 15th day of the month is the full moon. The 14th day of the month is the day of preparation, when they killed the lamb. The 10th day of the month is when they selected the lamb, and they brought it into the house, and they kept it. And this is an ordinance for the Jews to keep forever. I've always, <clears throat> excuse me, I've always kind of wanted to sit on one of them, but it's not for me. There's a lot of script guidelines over the Passover, all right? So with that in mind, we come to John chapter 12. And it just dawned on me today, or yesterday, as I was studying. I studied all day because normally I just wing it, okay? <laughs> but I studied for this one. Anyway, Jesus, it says, on six days before the Passover, Jesus was in Bethany. Now the Passover, everybody, all the Jews have to go to, to Jerusalem, or they want to. That's their life's desire to go to the temple and to sacrifice their lamb and so on and so forth. So you've probably, the estimate is probably two million people here in Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, if you want to speak about it in, in Hebrew. And they're packed, 
they're packed, they're packed out. They're camped on the hillsides and everything else. And Jesus is six days before the Passover, okay? And on the neck, and it dawned on me because his fame is spreading because I think he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. While he was in Bethany, just before he goes into Jerusalem, he raised, I think he raised Lazarus from the dead. That's how I kind of, okay? And it says on the next day he went in. Well, if it's on the next day, it's the 10th of the month. It's the 10th of the month. And he's going into Jerusalem. And I'd like to read uh, John 11, 49 and 50. And then one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. In other words, because there's a lot of uh, going on between the Romans and the Jews, Caiaphas was the high priest that year, just like the Pope is, has, let me step back, Annas was the high priest. That's why it, when they had the trials, they took Jesus before Annas the first, you know, at first, because he was the high priest. But Annas didn't get along with Pontius Pilate and some of the other Roman officials, and they posed him, they deposed him, and they put his nephew in, I think he was his nephew, Caiaphas, so Caiaphas was the high priest that year. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition. Tradition is a really a big key word here. Anyway, so Jesus on the fourth or on the tenth day of the month, he enters Jerusalem, and I'll let Gru do Palm Sunday, which mathematically doesn't work out right if he was crucified on Friday. And if he was crucified on Friday, mathematically you can't have a Sunday resurrection. But that's all tradition. Okay? Straight from the Vatican. Vatican controlled everything for about eight or twelve hundred years. Uh, South America speaks Spanish, but the Vatican declared something on the, the longitude, and therefore Brazil speaks Portuguese because they were farther east, and that's how the how even the languages of a continent were. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, here Jesus is, is in Jerusalem, and he sends John and Peter to prepare the Passover. They're in they're to the upper room, but what bothered me for a long time was, if you read scripture, Jesus was before Pontius Pilate, the sixth hour, on the day of preparation, which is the 14th day of the month. And if you read the scriptures, the Jews' day started at sundown to sundown. Roman time is midnight to midnight. So to understand what's going on, you have to decide, you have to realize that at sundown, it's the next day and not midnight as, as we receive as we conceive it. Therefore, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they will have Jesus on the cross the third hour, but in John, who is in Roman time, has Jesus before Pontius Pilate the sixth hour. So it, you, you need to study. Okay? Now the Jews, they wouldn't go into the judgment hall because they didn't want to defile themselves so that they could eat the Passover. But Jesus ate the Passover the night before. And that bothered me because God is very exacting. 
I mean, the 14th day of the month and the 10th day of the month and so on. Well, and again, I told you before, in Babylon, there was a discussion over what was the full moon. And that's why. Okay? Now, Jesus, he says in there, and I'm not going to chase all that stuff around. <clears throat> he desired to eat the Passover with them. And so God made provision to do all of this and to do all of this. If you knew that what your last night on earth was going to be, stop and think about it. If, if you knew what your last night on earth was going to be, what would you desire to do? What was Jesus' desire? To celebrate the Passover. That's how important the Passover is to God. Do you realize that the Passover has been celebrated for over 3,500 years? 3,500 Passovers? Okay. Now, I told you God prepared for this lesson, okay? What's the Passover? What's the day of preparation? A good Orthodox Jew has four sets of dishes. They have a set for meat and they have a, a set for milk and dairy products and stuff and you can't interchange them. Levitical law or something. So she has and pots and pans. I mean, you can't do something with one pot and use the other pot. That's quite interesting. But anyway, she has two sets of dishes and these are everyday dishes. She also has her very best, the china and so on and so forth that some of you have. I mean, my wife even has a set of china. I bought it in Japan for her. No, I bought it from my mother. She inherited it. That's the truth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and she breaks that out. Well, so she has this other set of china and pots and pans and dishes. Two sets, one for the milk and one for you know, the dairy products and one for the meat. And the day of preparation, she's busy. It's a dishwashing nightmare because she's got to wash the old ones and put them away, and she's got to get the new ones out that haven't been used for a year. And so she's going to be she's going to be busy washing them and so on and so forth. Okay. And to make matters worse, she's got her kids running around, and she's got all these preparations to do. And so the and God said to get all the leaven out of the house. So all the kids start looking for leaven and they're busy cleaning too because they're cleaning out the bread drawer and they're playing, you know, they're with toothpicks on the bread where they cut the bread and so on and so forth. Because they've got to get all the leavening out, which is basically yeast or sourdough and so on and so forth. And therefore they purge the house. Well, the wife hides some leaven around the house and they have the kids looking for the leaven. Okay? And so here, and then, and then when they find it, they call dad over. Dad comes over with a brush and a spoon. And, and, he, and, and they get the leaven and he throws it in the fireplace or he's got to get it out of the house. And he gets it out of the house and they declare the house ready. So this is the day of preparation. But she's also busy cooking because she's got to have this meal prepared Think about Christmas dinner or something at your house. You're busy all morning long, whether you like it or not. Unless you go to a restaurant. You go to a restaurant. Okay. Okay. In other words, in a Jewish house, there is none of these left. <laughs> this is gone. It's not there. There is no leaven. Gone. Fair enough. Now, the house is clean, everything's prepared, it's sundown. The father puts on a kittle, and it's a white robe. It's like the priest wore in the, in the tabernacle, and it's a white robe, and he initiates it. The woman, her only, <laughs> her only duties were the Passover meal and so on and so forth, which is ridiculous because she was busy all day preparing and cooking and so on and so forth. And I know how hard my wife works for something and I just walk in and okay. 
Her only job is to light two candles. And then it starts. And they have a Hagoda, which is a book that is in Hebrew. And it's published all over the world. So a Jew in Timbuktu can come to America and do the Passover and do it perfectly because they have all of the illustrations, all of the songs, <clears throat> everything. And when she lights the candles, he gets out the Hagoda and he looks at it and he takes a look at the table and so on and so forth and declares everything perfect. And they, I mean, everything is, is correct. Anyway, I wouldn't be able to, to pronounce this off of God or whatever. Anyway, this is why I said God prepared me to give this message, I don't know, five or six years ago, because I wanted some. This is their unleavened bread. And he gets three pieces of this unleavened bread. And I got more here if you guys want to try some or taste it or whatever. Feel free because it's been sealed for at least five years. <laughs> okay. And they just opened it. And anyway, he gets three and he puts two on the table and he breaks one. <laughs> anyway, and he puts it in a, in a, what he does is he has three compartments. This one, it's a cloth bag and he has three compartments and he puts one of these in each one of these in that compartment. And he, then he takes the middle one out and he breaks it and he puts it in, a, in another cloth, kind of like a pillowcase, but it's, it's small. And he puts it, and he takes it, and he gets it out of the way. All right? And then, the youngest kid in the family stands up, and he asks four questions. Every child gets a chance at this, because it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. You ask, if you're the youngest, you get that this question. Why is this night different? Other nights we may be eat of bread, but on this night only, unleavened. Why is this night different? Other nights we may eat any kind of herbs. This night we must eat only bitter herbs. Why is this night different? Other nights we do not dip even once, but tonight we dip Twice. Why is this night different? Other nights we eat sitting or reclining. Tonight we all recline. So if you're looking at uh, the Da Vinci's Ten Command or the where they have the Passover and they're sitting at this great big table and so on and so forth, forget it because they were reclining. <laughs> all right. Don't worry, I've got all kinds of notes here. We're going to be here for a long time. This Passover takes, you know, you're going to be from sundown, okay, till at least midnight because the questions open up the Passover and the Father recites all of the things that happened in the land of Egypt and how they did and so on and so forth. But he starts with the, one, with the first cup of wine which is the cup of sanctification. And after the, and so he's, everybody's had one cup, okay? And the next one is the, the second cup, and it's more of a, a spill, he spills it on a plate because the wine is red, and he spills it for every plague that happened in the land of Egypt, and so on and so forth. And I'd like to talk about
cedar plate. Cedar is S-E-D-E-R. It's right there on this. This is the official unleavened bread for the whole Passover right here. The cedar plate. It has horseradish on it. How many here have ever done horseradish? It's good, isn't it? My, my mother-in-law did horseradish. If you're really doing it, will it clear your sinuses? <laughs> <laughs> horseradish. Okay. And then they have horosis, which is uh, symbolizes the brick and mortar and stuff when they made it in the land of Egypt. And it consists of apples and honey and there's some other stuff that I forgot to write down. And the last ingredient is cinnamon, but it's pretty good. And one of the jobs one of the kids will have is to make this. And there's the shank bone of a lamb and that is Originally, the people had lamb for that night, but they can't eat lamb because there's no temple and the lamb can't be sacrificed at the temple. Therefore, they can't have lamb, so they have the lamb chain. It's on the plate. And their prayer is next day, next time Jerusalem. And right now, there's a big discussion going on about where the temple was actually located. Some say it was where the Dome of the Rock is, and they, others say, no, that was Fort Antonius, which is a Roman fort that was in Jerusalem, and they housed 10,000 soldiers there. So this was a real hotbed, okay? Uh, others say, no, it was in the city of David, and others say, no, it couldn't have been in the city of David because it's the threshing floor, and the threshing floor is a farm thing, and it would have been outside of the city of David. And anyway, the temple will get rebuilt, by the way. There's also parsley. There's a bowl of water, and salt water in the middle, and that's where they dip. That's why when Judas, he says, when that, you know, he who dips after me, they were dipping it in salt water, and it was parsley that they were eating, and everybody partakes of some of, of some of this. The other thing that was there is an egg. Now, an egg was not originally part of the Passover. The egg, they think, showed up in Babylon again. And it's a symbol of fertility. And one of the Babylonian gods was Ishtar, which is a fertility symbol and so on and so forth. And consequently, you can see how some of this creeps in because rabbits are very fertile and they multiply quite rapidly. And uh, Ishtar, uh, if you want to translate it today, is Easter. And what do we have? We have Easter eggs, we have colored Easter eggs, and we have Easter egg hunts. And it wasn't part of the original Passover, it has nothing to do with it. It is secular history. And am I denouncing Easter egg hunts? No, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Okay? It's just the way things are. It's, but that's why I say tradition. Tradition. It's not there. Okay, so after they get them with all of this, they have the sit-down meal. Can't be lamb, so it's probably chicken or beef or something. It's not pork, by the way. They'll have something <laughs> like that. And it's probably the best meal that they're going to have all year. And when you're sitting there reclining at that table, you're going to be there for about two hours. I mean, this is a eat and tell the story eat and tell the story. This is a family. This is a get-together like at Christmas. You know, you, you yearn for your friends, to, your loved ones to come to Christmas, and you all gather and you talk about this and you talk about that. Well, that's what the Passover is. And it's important to every Jew. It's important to God. It's important to God because the last night that Jesus was on this earth, he could have did anything 
and he celebrated the Passover. All right? Now, when this is all done, we get to the next, the third cup of wine. The first one was sanctification. The second one was more of a pour-out offering and so on and so forth. Now we're at the third cup, which is the cup of redemption. It's all part of the Passover. And so Jesus, I'm going to be real cognizant here. Jesus gets this other piece of bread on okay? And he holds it. The Father does it. And they break it. And he says, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do as often as you drink it, you show the Lord's death until you come. This is the Passover. This right here is the Passover. We think of breaking bread so you get a loaf of bread and you tear it apart. Maybe you grab something for convenience. We use the little wafers. And some churches have went and their Passover bread tastes like <coughs> pie crust. <laughs> okay. This is what Jesus did. He says, he broke it. And he says, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. In other words, God holds the Passover very important. The Jews have been doing it for 3,500 years. But it's not for me. But God said, communion is for you, Tom. Do this as often as you do it. Do it in remembrance of me. This is my Passover. This is important stuff. And then he went into Jerusalem. Then he was taken before Pontius. Pilate, and he was crucified, and so on and so forth. And he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. The other thing that we have to consider there is there's a one in Matthew that says the only sign I'll give this adulterous generation is three days and three nights in the, in the earth. And if you symbolize that, then you have to throw out the book of Jonah. Because Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So there's no symbolism here. You have to throw it out. So you have to figure out how to get three days and three nights and so on and so forth and still raise the third day according to the scriptures. And the answer is time frames. Paul said he was on Roman time, third day, any time after Saturday, Saturday night after sundown. This is the third day. And they couldn't have done it. If it was on Friday, you can't have Palm Sunday. If it was on Friday, you can't have. The Catholics will say because of it was on the Sabbath. But it wasn't. It was on the Sabbath. And you couldn't do any work or anything, so they couldn't go there. Okay, and the next day is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and you can't do any work or anything like that, so they couldn't go to the grave on the next day. And if the next day was such and such, Saturday after midnight. <clears throat> anyway, now you know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, and this is important for us, and I'm going to get on the sofa. We haven't had communion for a long time because of COVID. And I understand that. But it's important to God. And my God can take care of me. He took care of me because he knew I was going to be given this message. So he made sure I had my, my vaccinations before I got here. He started five years ago, at least, because this is set on the shelf in, in the basement for five years, and I thank God that it was wrapped in plastic because it's still dry. And I feel sorry for the person that's got to kind of clean up my mess. But anyway, there you have it. You have the Passover. And there's one more cup. 
And this shows up too, and I'll, I'll hurry up and end it here. It's the cup for Elijah, and the youngest in the, in the family was sent outside, outside the door and so on and so forth to look for Elijah. That's why they asked John the Baptist if he was Elijah. Elijah. They're looking for Elijah. Anyway, now you know the real truth about Easter, how important it is for Passover, and Satan steps in there, and Easter has been divorced from the Passover. Easter is two weeks from now. The day that such and such, 10th day of the month, 14th day of the month, three days and three nights, and rise again the third day. It's all there, and I thank you for allowing me to give you this message this morning. Let's hold on. service and we just thank you for all of this and we thank you in Jesus name.